Hello guys, welcome back. Today we've got a video starring my newly acquired R9 Nano. I am super excited to be showing this card off, as I've been trying to get my hands on one for ages now, especially at the right price. And here we are today with one. So I paid £180 for this card, which to me, I think it's worth it. When this card was released towards the back end of 2015, this card had an MSRP of £446, which equates roughly to $650. So this card was no joke. And to be honest, it still isn't. As you can see by the size of this thing, for 2015 architecture, I'd say it holds up pretty well. So this card is hosting a 1000 megahertz GPU clock. It's got four gigabytes of GDDR5, and it does have Direct12 support. One thing I will note is that this card is on its legacy drivers and no longer gets support by AMD. So that could be a problem for some. Anyway, moving on. So according to Tech Power Up, this card performs similar to a um, GTX 980 or the RX 590, and it's even very close to the 1660. So that'll be interesting to see. However, I don't have any of these cards to compare it to. Hopefully in the future I will, and that'll be great. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into the benchmarks and find out what this card is capable of. So before we get into the numbers, I'd just like to mention I am using a Ryzen 5 5600X with 16 gigabytes of RAM and of course the R9 Nano. If you'd like to see more information regarding my computer, all of that information is in the description. I'd also like to note that you would be able to run this card with very similar performance using a fourth gen i5. So for example, something like a 4460 or a 4690K or so basically anything from the fourth generation would run this card great. So anything newer and faster, then even better. So we're going to start with the lighter games. So we've got CSGO up at first and we are running at 1080p with the highest settings possible with 8 times MSAA and we are getting an average FPS of 250 on the dot with a 1% low of 167 and a 0.1% low of 138. So as you can see, very playable experience. Yes, you can get more FPS. You could just play competitive settings and honestly reach 4 to 500 FPS with this card. I would imagine no problem. So if that's something you're considering, then go ahead. This card is great for CSGO, but I'm sure we all knew that. So moving on with Valorant, also an easy to play title. Once again, we're running this game at 1080p with the highest possible settings, eight times MSAA. Basically everything just cranked up to the max. And as you can see, this game performs better than CSGO. And as you can see, this game performs even better than CSGO with an average FPS of 301, a 1% 1 low of 246, and a 0.1% low of 198. So one thing I can say about this card is it still holds up. Obviously, it was a $650 card when it was released. It's crazy to think that this card was released seven years ago. Anyway, like I mentioned in these easy to play titles, we expected <laughs> this card just to do very, very well. Or maybe not. A lot of people don't actually know about this card. So yeah, there's not really much to speak upon about this card. All we can do is as we progress, I'm going to do it like I said, I'm going to do the esports and easy to run games first and then as we get towards the end of the video the games will be a lot harder i say a lot harder but they will be harder to run so yeah let's move on so with everyone's favorite game fortnite one thing i will mention is that i'm not just playing this game on the lowest settings or pro settings which i usually do that's because i wanted to try this card at some nice settings like i said i never play fortnite or oh, i barely play fortnite anyway but i never play fortnite at high settings and enjoy the visuals because actually it turns out quite nice so we're running 1080p with a high preset and the epic view distance so we can see people from a mile away and we got an average fps of 73 with a one percent low of 62 and a 0.1 percent low of 58 so this game ran absolutely perfect you know maybe you could just crank the preset down to medium and then you know hit a very very nice fps without any issues whatsoever even though this card didn't give me any issues just a quick disclaimer i'm not great at most of these games i play I haven't really put much time into a lot of them. I mean, one thing I could say is I played quite a bit of Grand Theft Auto and a bit of CSGO years ago, but that's about it. So it's actually quite fun visiting these games and, you know, playing them and playing them in these benchmarks because I'm actually enjoying some games I never thought I'd enjoy. So anyway, this card runs this game absolutely perfectly. It will, it will play this game without any issues as expected. And like I said, if you want to hit over 100 FPS by a mile, just turn these settings right down, play in pro settings and you will be laughing. Okay, so moving on to Grand Theft Auto. One thing I'd like to mention, probably should have mentioned this a bit sooner, but I have mentioned it in other videos. To get these figures, the gameplay that you are seeing isn't the averages I come up with, only because I do use the built-in AMD recording software, which does tax a bit of performance on the card. So what I do is, with no background apps open, no recording, just the game itself, I run the MSI benchmark 
built-in feature, which then gives me a spreadsheet of the average FPS, the 1% lows, the 0.1% lows, and loads of other great features, just in case you're looking at the FPS in the gameplay and then thinking, well, this isn't adding up. And another thing to mention is, in, is that in these games, I do about a 20 to 30 minute test. So it's, you know, best case scenario. So for example, with Grand Theft Auto, I played for about half an hour to get the percentiles I came up with. So just a little insight, just so you know. If you are planning of getting this card and then using the AMD recording software to record videos, then at least this gives you a bit of a accurate representation of what this card is capable of. So enough of me mumbling on, let's move on to the percentiles. So as you can see, we've got an average FPS of 94 a 1% low of 76 and a 0.1% low of 57. This game looks great, especially for its age, and it runs absolutely perfectly in this card. I could have even put the settings up a bit more, but I'm very happy playing on this with this FPS. Please note that the performance may differ in different areas and especially online sometimes online can give me better performance however if i'm in a populated lobby then it can also give me worse performance so this is a good guy to go off but it'll run this game no matter what very very well okay so moving on to fallout 4 this was one of my all-time favorite fallouts right just after fallout new vegas that game is unbeatable in my opinion by a country mile so as we explore the wasteland as you can see this game runs amazingly well this is at the highest possible preset. The game automatically chose these options as I loaded the game up. However, I've turned off motion blur like I do in most games, if not every game, because I hate motion blur. Yeah, so as you can see, this game couldn't have performed any better, literally. I mean, there's even room to play 1440p. If you've got a 1440p monitor, I don't, so I won't be playing that. I'm happy at 1080p anyway. I have a little inkling that this game might even be able to run, well, will be able to run 4K at high settings. I'm not sure about higher settings. I can't test that as I don't have a 4K display. But yeah, as the numbers state, very, very impressed with this card. So happy to have got my hands on one. Average FPS of 117, a 1% low of 76, and a 0.1% low of 76. So look at that spread. Very tight. Didn't drop under 60 FPS, which bear in mind, this game automatically is capped at 60. I have gone into the config file and just removed vsync personally i just like playing with fps because why not <laughs> if i've got a card that runs at over 60 fps then why would i stick it to 60 fps it makes no sense to me personally i know some people state that there's graphical glitches and you know the game performs a bit weird without vsync enabled i don't believe it it works absolutely fine for me and if you're buying this card to play fallout 4 then you will have no issues whatsoever so moving on to forza horizon 5 one of my current favorite games i decided to choose the ultra preset with two times msaa like i've stated in my other forza videos i am more than happy with playing this game at 45 and beyond FPS, and we got an average FPS of 47, a 1% low of 41, and a 0.1% low of 34. So this game performed perfectly to me. If you are someone that prefers 60 FPS, then, you know, just crank some settings down. You don't even have to go to the high preset. You could just use the ultra preset as a guide and then just crank a couple of settings down and hit that 60, no problem. As I've done quite a lot of testing on Forza Horizon 5 lately on quite a bit of hardware, it is nice to see this card running this game at this frame rate i think it's doing it very well and it looks absolutely perfect i couldn't exactly tell you how this compares to the xbox series x or even the series s as i don't own them consoles but i would imagine we're not far off visually i'll tell you that i mean i do own this game on the xbox one x which is a great little console i think it would be very very similar except i'm capped at 30 fps on xbox so this card is outperforming xbox one x and bear in mind the xbox one x was the top of the line console in 2017 correct me if i'm wrong so it's nice to see this card doing so well in such a modern title and i know forza horizon 5 is optimized very very well but still this card has impressed me okay so moving on to warzone i've decided to add this game to my benchmarking pool <laughs> pool of benchmarks as you can see in the background the settings are very mixed i don't even know what to call this so i've literally just put 1080p mix settings i had no idea how this game was going to run as it is a bit newer and to be fair it is quite hard to run you know we're playing at decent settings like i said 1080p and we've got ourselves an average fps of 80 a one percent low of 67 and a 0.1% low of 59. So this game ran very well. I mean, it even looks good. If you wanted more FPS, you can just turn the settings down. But in my opinion, this game is fine at 80 FPS. So all I can say is this card ran this game without any issues. 
So if any of you are curious about the Modern Warfare multiplayer, we're just playing a couple of team death matches at the same settings, and it really surprised me. We got an average FPS of 102, a 1% low of 72, and a 0.1% low of 61. In my opinion, this card runs this game perfectly. Even 70 or 80 FPS is absolutely fine on this card, so a big well done for this card because, you know, like I said, it's a newer game, and but, you know, the graphics look quite great. Visuals are fine, everything is clear, very happy with it, so yeah, big well done. So because I don't think there's too much to speak on, I will just let the gameplay in the background carry on. Let me let me just say that I'm not too great, like I say in all of these benchmark videos. So we'll just get onto a quick conclusion. I don't like to keep these too long because realistically you come for the numbers and that's all you need and that, that is true. One thing I can say about this card is it is one of my all-time favourite cards ever made. Back when this came out in a time, you know, I, I say it in a time like it, it was so long ago, 2015 isn't really, but a lot has changed in seven years with graphics cards and, you know, at the time this card was absolutely incredible and to me, it's got a very special place in my heart. It still is. You know, the size of it, it's tiny. It only requires it only requires an 8-pin external power cable, which I think is great for the power it you know, it does use. But I just feel like they don't make things the same anymore. It came out around the same time as the GT 970, which is also one of my favourite cards. I think that one came out in 2014, which I had in my system for years personally, and I loved it. Still do love that card. Right now, we're speaking, you know, GPU crisis. For the same price, actually, this card cost me £180, which you can find quite frequently for £180. Yes, it doesn't have the latest and greatest driver support, but it does perform very well. I had no issues loading up any games. The GTX 970 can go £210, £220, and this card will outperform that card, 100%. I've not done any testing with a 970 for ages, but I know it will. That's that's coming from just personal knowledge. So, absolutely great card. Don't have much bad to say about it, except with it being a used card, like anything used, maybe just give it a nice clean, give it a fresh application of thermal paste, and I reckon you'll get a good few years out of this card. The temps are great, as you can see, top left, 70 degrees, whilst playing at 100% gaming load. So anyway, I'll sign off there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.